Good day to everyone. Let's talk about heat transfer, shall we? Heat is a form of energy and temperature is a measure of that energy. This is pretty obvious to everyone. In the subject of heat transfer, we study the rate at which heat is transferred from one object to the other. But didn't we study that in thermodynamics? So what's the difference? This can be well understood using a simple example. Consider a cup of coffee at a hundred degrees. Now the coffee is only drinkable when it's hot. So let's put this threshold at 50 degrees. And so it is only drinkable until it reaches 50 degrees and not below that. Using thermodynamics, we can calculate the amount of heat that the coffee can lose before it is undrinkable. Let us assume that the volume of coffee is 200 milliliters. Mass is equal to density times volume, which is equal to 1030 kilograms per meter cube, times 0 0.0002 meter cube. Yep, that's the conversion from milliliter to meter cube. This is equal to 0 0.206 kilograms. The amount of heat that the coffee can lose before it becomes undrinkable can be calculated using thermodynamic analysis. Q is equal to MCP delta T, where M is the mass, CP is the specific heat at constant pressure, and T is for temperature. Let's take the CP value of coffee to be 4 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Substituting these values, we arrive at the answer that the total amount of energy to be transferred from the coffee to its surroundings is 41.2 kilojoules. Eloquently done. But more importantly, we have missed the question that is, when will the coffee reach the temperature at which it is undrinkable? This cannot be answered using thermodynamic analysis. It can only be answered using heat transfer. The question when plays a very important role in the field of engineering. For example, when does the air conditioner cool the room to the desired temperature? When does the molten metal solidify before it can be processed further? When does the engine of a car start overheating? One other question that thermodynamics fails to answer is how efficiently or how effectively a process can happen. Another way to understand this is to ask yourself this question. Imagine a completely sealed hot room. Now let us say that one of the windows of this room is open and the surrounding air is colder than the inside of the room. Now obviously the colder air starts to flow in and tries to cool the room down. So far everything is good. From personal experience you know that this is a very slow process. You also know that the area of the room which is closer to the window cools down first. Then the coolness starts to spread inwards and finally the corners of the room also cool down to the surrounding temperature. Now of course the time taken for the room to cool down is important but what else is important is the temperature distribution of the room. This question of temperature distribution is another important parameter that is extensively studied in the field of engineering. For example, the temperature distribution in an electrical conducting wire is studied so that there is no excessive joule heating. In another example, the temperature distribution of body tissues is studied when it is exposed to powerful rays like X-rays or gamma rays. This is especially very important because when we direct these rays towards the cancer tumors, we only want them to affect the tumors and not the tissue surrounding it. So now it should be clear that heat transfer is a study of rate of heat flowing from one object to the other. It also studies the distribution of temperature in space and time and that is the reason why you will notice that almost all formulae in heat transfer have derivatives with respect to space and time. In some processes, the temperature does not change with respect to time. 
take the temperature of a normal human body for instance it is a constant 37 degrees celsius whether it be day or night this temperature has to be maintained by the body otherwise the abnormal temperature is termed as fever so the temperature of human body is said to be steady if the temperature varies from time to time then it is said to be unsteady or transient similarly sometimes the temperature does not change with respect to spatial coordinates consider this example in a completely open ground the temperature of two rocks which are adjacent to each other is always the same in such cases the temperature is said to be uniform when the temperature varies from one place to the other for example like when there is a tree nearby and the other rock is in the shade of that tree then the temperature of the rocks is not going to be the same obviously in this case the temperature is said to be non-uniform similarly in some places the temperature may vary in one direction and not vary in the other direction consider the example of a roof of a house if we take two points on the same horizontal roof then the temperatures are going to be the same as soon as you measure the temperature on the surface of the roof that is exposed to the sun and the surface that is not exposed to the sun you will see a big difference if we choose suitably the x y z axis then the temperature seems to be uniform in the x axis and y axis but the temperature is non uniform in the z axis such analysis is called 1d analysis because the temperature varies only in one dimension also notice in this example the dimension of the roof is smaller in the same direction when compared to the dimensions in the x and y directions so it should not be assumed that whichever dimension is small the temperature distribution is going to be uniform in that dimension as you can see in this example that there is a temperature variation in the z direction which is actually the smallest when compared to x and y so the temperature distribution in a typical 1d analysis would look something like this the temperature distribution in a typical 2d analysis would look something like this and finally the temperature distribution in a typical 3d analysis would look something like this but sometimes care must be taken to not confuse a 1d analysis as a 2d analysis take an electrical conductor for example you would see the temperature distribution only in z direction is constant and so you would think that it belongs to a 2d analysis category but if you closely observe the temperature distribution pattern in x-axis and y-axis are exactly the same because of this reason the coordinate system can be shifted from cartesian to polar coordinates from this you can observe that the temperature distribution changes only in the r direction and the temperature remains constant in both theta and z direction therefore this analysis can be treated as a 1d analysis and there is one final thing that an engineer should always be able to distinguish and that is the scale of things depending on the requirement a situation could sometimes be uniform and sometimes be non-uniform suppose you are an engineer and trying to design the air conditioning of a system then you would treat the human body temperature to be a constant at 37 degrees but suppose you are a doctor then you would immediately consider the fact that if the temperature of skin is measured on the exposed parts it is less when compared to the temperature of the skin in unexposed parts for example if you try to measure the temperature on the forehand it will be lesser when compared to the temperature under an armpit this is the reason why when doctors measure the temperature of the human body they put the thermometer in the armpit and not on the forehand anyway the point is that depending on the situation the assumptions made change for the same case so it is essential for an engineer 
to maintain a good judgment and a sound justification of his assumptions.